Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 20th day of April. It is Saturday, 2024, and today's topic is titled, The Sons of Thunder. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that's the most important thing you can do is trust Jesus as your Savior and he will wash away all your sin and give you eternal life. And then he will guide you and direct you and show you how to live a Christ-like life and just to believe on him and trust him. As Brother Alltop was saying in the message last night, so I encourage you to go listen to that from the Youth Rally uh, from last night, the 19th. So go check that out and you can go watch that at the YouTube channel, which is James Knox Sermons YouTube channel, or you can go straight to the church website, which is www.jameswknox.org, and get the um, video or audio um, that way, if you like to listen to audio and don't like video, um, however you uh, listen to it, but I encourage you to go watch it in its entirety, and then the skit was also really good, so check that out also, and I'm sure that They'll have that up uh, for a little bit to watch the whole entirety of the Youth Rally last night. And uh, so, praise the Lord. And then uh, today, uh, Youth Rally continuing today. And so pray pray uh, for today's uh, um, events and preaching and all that. And go over that a little bit more at the end of the broadcast. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the scripture song for today. And this is from John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29. And this is Jesus speaking here. And let's go ahead and look at chapter 10 really quick and see if there's anything else we need to go over here before we get into the scripture song. And John chapter 10. So let's go here to John chapter 10 and see here. So John chapter 10 and verse 27. So let's see here. Let's go back up to verse 22 and starts a new paragraph here. And it says, And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. So we're talking about um, what was going on before. And I encourage you to read all of chapter 10 on your own time. But we're going to start with uh, verse 22. And then verse 23 says, And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him. And said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus has been telling them plainly the whole entire time. But they just didn't want to listen or believe. And so Jesus says here, he says, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you ye believed not. Uh, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones against uh, again to stone him. Jesus answered them, uh, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father, for which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him who, whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, thou, uh, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode, and many resorted unto him, and said, 
John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. So, all right, so that's the rest of the chapter there in context about what's going on. So now let's go ahead and get into the scripture song for today. Um, press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. John 10, 27 through 29. My, my sheep hear my voice, voice and, I and I know them, them and, and they, they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they, they shall never perish. perish. Neither shall, shall any man pluck them out of my hand. hand. My, my Father which gave them to me is greater than all. And, and no man is able to put them out of my Father's hand. Praise the Lord for that. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand, and Father gave them me his greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Praise God, and hallelujah for that. So, if you're saved... Uh, nobody can pluck you out of Jesus' hand nor the Father's hand. And so, praise the Lord for that. All right, so let's go ahead and put that aside for right now and get into today's topic for this 20th day of April, Saturday, titled The Sons of Thunder. And Mark 3.17 says, And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he, he surnamed them Boenergies, which is... The Sons of Thunder, Mark 3.17. And today's author is E.B. That would be the initials for Eric Blankenship, pastor of Unity Baptist Church in Hickory, North Carolina. So and I encourage you to read all of Mark chapter 3 on your own time, but we're going to um, stick with just uh, this topic here, The Sons of Thunder. And uh, so let's get into it here. So the author writes here, uh, he says, In selecting his twelve disciples, Christ found James and John by the Sea of Galilee, mending their fishing nets. They were two ordinary men, but Jesus saw something in them that not even they could see. The Lord called them from their occupation, promising to make greater use of their time. Without a list of questions or lingering hesitation, the brothers stepped out of the boat together to begin walking with Jesus. Through this obedience, they were led to a life of service. They were fishermen. They were followers. They were faithful. But perhaps their greatest quality was they were on fire. And you two can be on fire for the Lord and stay on fire. So, amen. And he continues on. He says, with this privilege, James and John witnessed many miracles. How did they acquire the nickname, the Sons of Thunder? As we consider the effect of thunder, we possibly would agree that it is made up of more volume than vision, right? So, more volume than vision. Many people have heard its voice, but no one has seen its face. This uh, quality represents a measure of boldness clothed in humility. These men were much like thunder, content to be heard rather than seen, and if we are to make a difference, those around us must not only hear about Christ in our language, but we must also exhibit him clearly in our lives. Remember, the righteous are not only loud as thunder, but also bold as a lion. 
Ah, right, so, amen. And, uh, yeah, we won't uh, get into that scripture song to, today, but Brother Dean has a good scripture song uh, about uh, that uh, verse there. Um, I think it's from Proverbs or Psalms, uh, being bold as a lion. And uh, so, amen. And, and that's from the December CD, so if you want to go listen to it, I encourage you to do so. And uh, so that's that. So let's not just be loud as thunder, but also be bold as a lion. So, amen. All right, so that's the end of that topic there. And good topic um, about being bold and uh, being loud and presentable and humble as we're preaching God's word and all that stuff. So... Praise the Lord. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into today's um, topic for this 11th week of uh, from the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. And we are concluding this week today on edification. And this is written by Douglas D. Stauffer and Andrew B. Ray. And this is Day 77, Saturday, titled, Everything We Do Should Be Edifying. And we have here 1 Corinthians 14, 26 says, how is it, then, brethren, when ye come to uh, came, uh, come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. Right, and that's Paul speaking there. So, I encourage you to read all of chapter fourteen to get the context. So, but let's go ahead and get into the introductory thoughts now. It says the Bible reveals that carnality infected and infested the first century Cor Corinthian church, right? Sure did. Uh, divisions were commonplace as the believers were polluted by strife and envy. Uh, when the believers gathered together, every man did that which was self-pleasing. Every believer desired to be the center of attention rather than giving others first place. And we can learn lessons from these things, not to do these things. And continue on, it says, Every one of them had a psalm, or a doctrine, or a tongue, or a revelation, or an interpretation, but nobody sought to use those things for edification. Each of these things could have been used for good, but Paul said that the church being edified was most needed, 1 Corinthians 14.5. As believers, every aspect of our service to God should seek to edify others, this most especially includes the times when we gather together. So let's not have strife and divisions, but gather together to edify one another and whatever uh, gift the Lord has given you to do. And uh, not try to be better than the other person. So, all right. So that's introductory thoughts. And now for devotional thoughts for children. It says sometimes building up others can be with or without words. David said, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Psalm 101, 2a is the reference. At church, do you sing out during the song service, listen during preaching time, and obey the rules? Do you ignore some children while speaking only to those you consider your friends? Mm. And that can go for adults too. So, all right, so that's for children and um, adults also. You can apply this to yourself. And now for everyone, devotional thoughts for everyone, it says, do you take part in the worship services? Could the things that you do be used of God to edify others? Are you self-centered in your service to God? Mm. Yeah. Does your choice of songs edify the saints or feed the flesh? Does the preaching and teaching edify or weaken the saints? What steps can you take to ensure that the saints are edified? So, good questions to meditate on and ask yourself and all that. So, that is devotional thoughts. And now for prayer thoughts, it says, Ask the Lord to help you be selfless in your service toward Him. And then ask God to show you that worshiping Him is not about you. And then the song from the book is titled, Who is on the Lord's Side? So that will be the hymn, the second hymn for today. And now let's turn the page here and read the quotes from the next volume, Volume 3, Week 11, Subject Contention Continued. 
And so we have three quotes here. First quote says this, Strife is birth from pride and yields foolish behavior. <laughs> That's the truth. And it says here, The Bible likens strife to the bars of a castle, Proverbs eighteen nineteen, creating a prison for some, an impossible barrier for others. And then the last quote here says, A contentious man notices when the fires of strife begin to be extinguished and seeks to rekindle the flame. So don't do that. Let it, uh, let it be extinguished and, and put out. So good quotes there from um, the subject on contention continued from the next volume. And so tomorrow... We'll be starting a new week, week 12, and this week will be, or next week will be on fasting. So one week on this topic of fasting, and we'll go over all the introductory stuff, um, fasting, how it's found, variations on the word, first usage, and then last usage, and how it's defined, interesting fact about it, and then a Bible study tip, and then we'll go over the week, and then tomorrow will be day 78, church day, no, um, devotional topic for tomorrow so read some more fight um more fight on stories from the more fight on book and give you those uh, stories here in a few minutes but now let's go ahead and get into the hymns so here we go all right so this first hymn let's do that okay so this first hymn is titled when the battle's over and um, it's also uh, titled, it's also titled here, Am I a Soldier of the Cross When the Battle's Over? Um, so that's the other title for it. So however you want to look it up. And this is hymn 717 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Another one of these, The Spiritual Warfare of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song written by Isaac Watts, who lived from 1674 to 1748. And he has done verses 1 through 6 in the hymn. And then we have Anonymous for the refrain. And then this is from English Melody, arranged by William B. Blake, who lived from 1852 to 1938. So, six stanzas here. So let's go ahead and get started here. And press play and listen to the intro first. Soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb. And shall I fear to own his cause, or blush to speak his name? And when... Okay. I want to see something here. All right, it doesn't do the refrain on this particular one. So let's go to this other one here. I do apologize about that. So let's go to this other one here. Try to find this other one. Let's see if I can find this other one. All right, so let's not... All right, so let me see about this one here. Not sure why it's not letting, that it doesn't have the frame on this particular one. So let's try this one. All right. So we'll do this one and then we'll do the other one because it's a little bit of a different tune here. So we'll do it from the from this here. So let's see. Um, all right, let me try to get this going here. All right, here we go. Am I a soldier of the cross of fowl of the lamb? And shall I fear to own his cross? 
cause or blush to speak his name. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown to Jesus. Okay. All right. I'm having a hard time reading this particular one because it's so small here. All right, so let me try this over again. I have to just do the other version here and then read this particular one here. So try it again. Here we go. One more time. Let's see. Alright, so let's try this here. I'll try to go and read it like this. Alright, here we go. I'm try it. Right. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause, or blush to speak his name? And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. We wear a crown, we wear a crown, we wear a crown, we wear a crown, we wear a bright and shining crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease? While others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas. And when the battle's over, we shall win a crown, wear a crown, we shall, yes, we shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shining crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? Is this my world a friend to grace to help me on to God? And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new, new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown. What a bright and shining crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Alright, let's put this back here so we can do the rest of these stanzas. Alright, so now you get an idea here. So we're going to finish these uh, stanzas four through five, uh, six. So here we go. Sure, I must fight if I would reign. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by thy word. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. When wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shining crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. 
Then thy saints in all this glory war shall conquer, though they die. They see the triumph from afar, and seize it with their eye. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shining crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. When the illustrious day shall rise, and all thy army shine in robes of victory. Through the skies the glory shall be thine And when the battle's over we shall win a crown Yes, we shall win a crown We shall wear a crown When the battle's over we shall wear a crown In the new Jerusalem Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a crown Wear a bright and shining crown and when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Amen. I like that hymn, but it was a little challenging to sing at first, but maybe we'll try that hymn another time. But it is a good hymn, and especially like the refrain here. Um, uh, so, good, good refrain there. And now let me read you the story here at the bottom. And then give you the references, and then move on to the second hymn. So it says here, uh, Dr. Watts uh, penned these lines as he was often wont to do, as a parallel with a sermon in 1727. The discourse was entitled Holy Fortitude, or Remedies Against Fear, with his text from 1 Corinthians 16.13. So, all right, so that was... Uh, that hymn there, and there is another um, there is another version of this hymn with a little bit of a different tune, and so maybe we'll do that one next time, and let you hear the differences um, with it. Maybe we'll do this one another day along with that that one, and then give you the variations and how it uh, sounds each way. All right, so let's go ahead and give you the references here. So stanza one, we have Second Timothy two three through four. And Acts 4, 15 through 31. Stanza 2 is Hebrews 11, 37. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Stanza 3 is 1 John 2, 17. And James 4, 4. And then stanza 4 is 2 Timothy 2, 11. And 2 Timothy 4, 5. Stanza 5 is Romans 8, 37. And 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 9. And then stanza 6 is... Uh, what is that? Uh, I think that's Joel, uh, chapter 2, 1 through 11. That's J.L. I believe that's probably um, for Joel 2, 1 through 11. And then Revelation 19, 11. And then for the refrain, we have 2 Timothy 4, 8. And Revelation 20, verse 6. So that is the end of the first hymn there. And now let's go ahead a little ways to the second hymn which is titled who is on the lord's side so let's go look up this hymn here who is on the lord's side right. who is on here all right so turn this down here in case there's ads really quick and then do this second one here all right so turn this back up and make sure it's not too loud all right so this is uh who is on the lord's side i like this one a lot too it's a good one 
This is uh, one of these, the resolve of the saint hymns, um, a spiritual song, hymn 754 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, which we'll get to in a few uh, weeks here again. And this is written by Frances R. Havigal, and she lived from 1836 to 1879. And then C. Louise uh, Reinhardt, that's C, and then um, for the initial there, C, and then Louise, L-U-I-S-E, Louise uh, Reinhardt, that's R-E-I-C-H-A-R-D-T. And they lived from uh, uh, 1780 to 1826. And then adapted by Sir John Goss, 1800 to 1880. So, and there is a story for this one here. So, here we go. Who is on the Lord's side? serve the king who will be his helpers other lives to bring who will leave the world's side who will face the foe who is on the Lord's side who for him will go by thy call of mercy by thy grace divine we are on the lord's side savior we are thine not for weight of glory not for crown and palm Enter we the army Praise the warrior psalm But for love that claimeth Lives for whom he died He whom Jesus nameth Must be on his side by thy love constrain it by thy grace divine we are on the lord's side savior we are thine jesus thou hast bought us not with gold or gem, but with thine own life blood for thy diadem. With thy blessing filling each who comes to thee, Thou hast made us willing, Thou hast made us free. By Thy grand redemption, By Thy grace divine, We are on the Lord's side, Savior, we are Thine. Fierce may be the conflict, strong may be the foe, but the king's own army now can none can overthrow. Round his standard raging, victory is secure. For his truth unchanging makes the triumph sure. Joyfully enlisting by thy grace divine, we are on the Lord's 
side, Savior, we are thine. All right, let's go back here and do this last stanza here. All right. Okay. So here we go. Frozen to be soldiers in an alien land. Chosen, called, and faithful for our captain's band. In the service royal, let us not grow cold. Let us be right loyal, noble, true, and...